Hello, I'm Eric and I'm working on my own home automation project called Jarvis and I would like to share some of my progress with you. Uh, first, let me show you pro Jarvis in action and then I'll talk about how it's built and uh, what he can do. So, here's the living room instance of Jarvis. Here you can see the camera with the microphone in it connected via USB to the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi is connected to a speaker and then some lights. So, uh, Jarvis, lights down. Okay, lights down. Jarvis, lights up. Okay, lights up. How is the weather tomorrow, Jarvis? Tomorrow's weather will be mostly cloudy until afternoon. Temperatures will be between minus 5 and 1 degrees. What's the outside temperature, Jarvis? It is 1 degrees. Thank you, Jarvis. You got it. Currently I got Jarvis running on two Raspberry Pis in my apartment. Uh, they're running Windows 10 IoT Core and I coded them myself uh, in C-sharp using Visual Studio. Uh, I'll show you some of the code uh, very soon, but first I'll explain what you just saw. Uh, the two Jarvis instances are talking to a third Raspberry Pi that controls the lights. Later on I'm gonna make them talk to like uh, Philips Hue or something. But right now it's a third Raspberry Pi. Uh, and when I talk to, ask for the weather, uh, they go to darksky.net. Uh, let me show you their website. There. Uh, they got a nice API. Uh, I'll show you that later. Uh, the goal of the project is to be able to talk to Jarvis wherever I am in my apartment and he should be able to hear me and perform the actions. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is the perfect choice for that project because I can put one Raspberry Pi in each room that I would like Jarvis to hear me and have them on around the clock because they're so power efficient. Uh, also they're cheap and with Windows 10 they're actually easy to code. So, awesome. Let's dive into some code. Here we have the Jarvis solution loaded. It's a Windows Universal application. Uh, here we got some simple UI. Uh, mostly, it's a big log for debugging purposes. Uh, nothing special. The most interesting about this is the speech recognition. So let's have a look at that first. Uh, here we have a speech recognition driver. It's a private field of the main page. Let's have a look where it's initialized. So we knew it up here, and then we initialized it here. If we got the permissions for the microphone, we uh, initialize it here. Uh, we provide it with the system speech language. It, it's always English right now. Uh, I think it's the only supported language. So let's have a look here. Here we knew up the speech recognizer. Uh, we're currently in the speech recognition driver, which is a part of the Jarvis core here. So here we knew this up. Uh, it's a part of the windows.media.speech recognition library. And that's where the recognition is coming from. Uh, here we compile the constraints for the recogn recognizer. Uh, you can put the recognizer in dictation mode or concert mode. In concert mode it's much more accurate, so that's what I use it. Uh, but you can also use dictation mode because uh, then it can recognize a lot more uh, commands. Uh, but I use concert mode because it's way more accurate. So basically this generates a big list of constraints uh, a big list of things that I can say, and then we compile it. All the constraints here. So when that's done, we start the recognizer. Let's jump in here. Uh, still in the driver here. Uh, 
So in here we call the continuous recognition session start async method. And uh, what this does is that it starts uh, the recognizer and it runs it continuously. Uh, that allows us to recognize results um, over time. So you can also put it in a normal recognition mode and it will record for some 7 seconds and then it will return a result and quit listening. Uh, this gives us the ability to listen over long periods of time. So that's why we use it here. Uh, and then we register on this method, it's important, it's result generated. Uh, and this is called whenever the recognizer uh, generates a result of some sort. And then we call the handle recognition result. From here we check the confidence level. Uh, if it's rejected, we uh, debug log it here. Uh, if it's normal talk, that's what this is. We register all the possible uh, commands with this uh, without the Jarvis com uh, command. Uh, so you can say all lights down, uh, nothing will happen because it's normal talk. Uh, only if you say Jarvis all lights down, something would happen. Uh, this is because otherwise the recognizer will recognize uh, all all kinds of uh, commands all the time because it's so eager to hear and uh, register uh, what you what you're saying so this is to prevent accidental triggers uh, and then we check if the con confidence level is high enough uh, if it's not we just debug log it confidence too low you can actually say uh, shut up Jarvis and he will hide the uh, minimum confidence needed. Uh, this is if you're like watching a movie you maybe wanna want him to shut up for a while. Uh, otherwise he can accidental trigger when they in the movie if, if you're watching Iron Man and he's talking to Jarvis all the time. Uh, yeah, that can cause some problems. <laughs> Uh, if all this passes, we invoke this, speech recognized. And the only place where we listen at this for the moment is uh, here. We The speech recognized in the main page. Here we run this, uh, we get the command uh, from the tag that we registered. Uh, and the command uh, from the command we um, pick a random response from the possible responses you can have multiple responses uh, f for a single command like if you say thank you Jarvis he can say no problem or he can say uh, you're welcome uh, so this is to get some to get a r random response every time uh, makes him feel more human uh, so we get the response here and we put it into the speech synthesizer driver uh, and it, this runs text to speech and put it out in the in the speakers then we got the command distributor and uh, this is where we distribute the commands for to the to the handlers uh, it's where we do the logic to to make the commands ha happen so we pass the command in here, and then we check the handler, uh, and we, then we pass it to the correct handler. Uh, let's look at the lights, for example. Uh, if it's if if the command has the light handler, we pass it into here, and then we can toggle the lights uh, according to yeah this state, desired state, or and desired name of the light. So in this case, we do an HTTP call to my third Raspberry Pi uh, running Nexa Home server um, and that toggles the lights so I think that will be it for this video uh, I think I will do some more videos about this product maybe I can show you the installation process and some good tooling for working with Raspberry Pi Windows 10 IoT Core Maybe I can show some more code. Uh, 
Also, uh, I will be adding links in the description for the microphone and some other hardware because it's kind of important what microphone you use at the moment. Uh, the speech recognition library won't support any microphone. So that's kind of important. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Bye!